In this video, we're going to solve our first example of using the secant method. Example 3.1. Use the secant method to solve the equation x squared minus 2 equal to 0, x greater than 0, within an error of 10 to the minus 4. Now this is different than the problem we solved using the bisection method that had the same function. Why is that? Here, our goal is to find an approximate value of x such that the absolute value of x squared minus 2 is less than 10 to the minus 4. So we want the value of the function to be small, not the distance from the root itself. That is, here we are not approximating the square root of 2, we're approximating x squared minus 2. So what do we need to check? We need to check if the function is continuous. Yes, it's a polynomial, so it's continuous. And we need a starter interval just like we did for the bisection. And so let's go to GeoGebra and solve this problem. Here we are in GeoGebra. I actually have the table set up for using the secant method over here. But the first thing we're going to do is input our function. So we come down here to the input bar and click and start typing f of x equals x squared minus 2. So we're, even though we're solving the equation, we input f of x as a function. Hit enter. There it is, our parabola. And now our error, again, is 10 to the minus 4, so we can write 10 to the minus 4, or we can write 1 point capital E minus 4 and hit enter. And we see that we get 10 to the minus 4. And let's go ahead and find the root using GeoGebra. So root and what we want is this second one down here. That's the one that uses Newton's method. Click on that. The function is f, and we tab over to the next. And let's try putting in 1. 1. And sometimes what we do is we get the other root. So we could see that we could use 2 and be sure to get this root. So how do we change it? Double click. There it is. And we go inside there with our arrow key and change 1 to 2 and hit enter or OK. And now we have the right hand root here. So again, we're looking for a number that's close to the square root of 2, but the objective is not to get close to the square root of 2 so much as to make this close to 0. So we need an interval. We can see that it's 1 and 2, but just so we go over that part again, slide over here until we get to a couple of empty columns. And let's put in, it said we needed x greater than 0, so we'll put in 0 as a starter one. And so this would be equals f of i, capital I, 1. And hit enter, and we get a negative value. Remember, we need a bracketed root, so we need a negative and then a positive. So let's increase 0 by 1. So click there, equals, and then that would be i1 plus 1 enter and then we can just drag this one down it's still negative that's this point here and now we can drag both down since they're both formulas and we get our negative and then our positive so this is our interval that brackets the root one and two so now we're ready to start using the secant method so we would go back to our table now and open up our table and put here 1 and here 2. Or we could do the other way around, 2 and 1. But most people work from left to right. So let's open this and get started. Here we have our table with the headings that we need for the secant method and the number of iterations, as always. Then we need two endpoints, their function value at those two endpoints. We need to calculate the secant slope and then calculate the new endpoint. And then in this particular problem, recall that we were asked to find an approximation to x so that the function value, so we need to calculate the function value, has an absolute value less than the given error. So that's why we have these two columns here, because that's what the problem asked for. These columns come from the secant method. These two columns come from what is asked of us so that we know when to stop. So how do we start filling this in? We put a 1 here for our first iteration, hit enter, and now we need to make a formula, so equals, 
Uh, the one above it is capital A2 plus 1, and hit Enter, and then drag this down. I suggest that you do the iteration column separate from these columns. Now, our bracketed interval was 1 and 2. So 1 here and 2 here. So this comes from our problem. And now we need the formula, so equal to f, little f for the function, and then capital D, 2. Hit enter. Over here we have equals little f, capital C, 2. The secant slope. Now we know that the slope of a line is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. But let's go get our formula from what we were working on. Here it is. On the end step, we form a new interval, xn minus 2, xn minus 1, and calculate the secant slope. We can see it's the change in the f values over the change in the x values. Let's make a copy of these two and put them in our table so we can work. So we need the change in the f values equals parenthesis e2 minus d2. Go outside there, divide it by the change in the x values here. So parenthesis c2 minus b2. Enter. And now we look at the formula below. We have equals. We need the last x, so that's c2, and then a minus sign, then the f of that x, so e2, and then we divide it by the secant slope, which is f2. Again, this is the part of the secant method that we have to have. This depends on the error. Here we can see that we're looking for f of that, so equals f of, what is it, g2, and hit enter. And now here, remember to put absolute value, otherwise it doesn't work so well. But we can see that at this moment, this is greater than 10 to the minus 4 in absolute value. So here we have equals, absolute value is a function, so it gets parentheses, not brackets. And then we need h2 for the address, come outside, and we're checking whether it's less than the error. It should be false. Enter. False. Okay, so everything looks good. Now we need our new interval. In the secant method, the new interval is this last point becomes the next to the last point. So click here, equals C2, hit enter. And the new last point is our new point, so this will be G2. Remember that in the second method, we do not compare the signs of the function values. We just take the last one becomes the next to the last one, and the new one becomes the last one. We're ready to copy. So we just take these, copy it down, and then take the whole row and copy it down until we get a true there. So that's a false, so let's pick it up and copy again. There's a true. So let's click on that, make it green, make our x value green, and make our number of iterations green. Those are usually the things that are asked of us. Now, how many decimals do we need? Well, let's click below here and write down as many as we can see. First of all, 1.414, the 6 was no good, so we at least need the 2. We might need the 1, 1, and 4, but we'll start with the first one that is different from the one above. And we're going to just take these and pull them down, and if it's true, which it is, we're done. If it's not true, that means that this 2 is not close enough, so then we would add the next decimal here, a 1, and then if that doesn't still give us true, we would add the next decimal until we get a true here. But we have true, so this is our answer. Let's mark it with pink. So 1.4142 gives us a function value that is less than 10 to the minus 4. We can see it right here. Now. I solved it again in GeoGebra, this time only rounding to five decimal places. And when I got to true, I saw that 1.41421 gave me true. And I said, hmm, I will use that as my answer. It is also an answer because that number squared minus 2 gives me a number smaller than 10 to the minus 4. So there's many answers. Also, both the number of iterations and your answer can depend on your start interval. I did this problem again using the start interval 0 to 3. I needed 6 iterations 
and I got 1.41422. So you have to be very careful what's being asked of you. If you're given an interval, you need to use that interval in order to count the number of iterations. And you also need to realize that the only thing that's required of the answer is that when you put it into the equation, you get less than 10 to the minus 4. And with that, we have solved our first example using the secant method. On to a couple more examples.